founded scientists until the development of plate tectonics theory in the 1960s. Plate tectonics is the overall model of how different parts of the Earth's crust are moving relative to each other. And the crust of the Earth is broken up into major plates. They slide past each other uh, and they move on faults. The San Andreas Fault is the major fault zone helping slide the North American plate past the Pacific plate. And this movement occurs at about two and a half inches a year. Doesn't sound like very much, but over geologic time, it builds up into a lot of slip that has to be accommodated. These great strides in understanding earthquake processes track directly back to the 1908 Lawson Report. Perhaps one of the most important results that came out of this study was the development of Harry Fielding Reed's theory of elastic rebound. He used the information collected from land surveys that allowed him to measure the changes in land surface that had been caused by the earthquake. This was something that had been understood in rough form before the earthquake, but he developed the first scientific theory about how forces accumulate along faults only to be released in earthquakes. We call this the elastic rebound theory, and it's the foundation, really, of our modern understanding of the earthquake process. If you can think of the crust as a slab of rubber, and you're grabbing the rubber from the two sides and moving it past each other, if the fault itself were Teflon, the rubber would just move by and, and never be distorted. But because the fault has friction, then the rubber gets distorted, and stresses are built up on that surface. So that process is very, very slow an inch a year, and suddenly, at the time of the earthquake, a very small piece of that high friction surface is going to let go. And as it does so, it starts slipping. And in the space of a few seconds, it's, that slippage speeds up from an inch a year to 5,000 miles an hour. And that process then tears down the fault at these high speeds until it comes to a stuck patch where it can hang there for several seconds. If it's going to be a er large earthquake, it's going to burst through, speed up again to 5,000 miles an hour, and go flying into the next knot in the piece of wood, if you like. Hang there and then burst through again. In parts of California, we just really have the San Andreas Fault. It's the major feature. But in places like the Bay Area, the fault splays. It's like the trunk of a tree. It comes into the Bay Area, big branches come out, these are the major faults like the San Gregorio and the San Andreas and the Hayward and Rogers Creek, the Calaveras, the Concord Green Valley. And they accommodate most of the movement. And then even little faults come off of them. And they're like smaller twigs. Each different size fault produces different size earthquakes. And here in the Bay Area, we have many faults of different sizes spread out across the entire region. Each of those faults could produce a damaging earthquake. In fact, taken together, we think a damaging earthquake is nearly twice as likely to happen as not over the next 30 years. Earthquake information for the Bay Area, California, and worldwide can be found at quake.usgs.gov. Menu items linked to things like, did you feel it, shake maps, and the Earthquake Information and Preparedness Handbook, Putting Down Roots. Science now gives us all a way to clearly see and understand the earthquake risk in our own lives.